Just two events remain on the regular season schedule on the PWBA Tour. We roll into Columbus. We're on the road. Let's get it. I am literally standing on lane eight inside Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. Big thanks to the USBC and PBA Hall of Famer, Wayne Webb and his wife, Elaine, gracious host this week for the nationwide PWBA Columbus Open. Welcome to On the Road. I am your host, Emil Williams Jr. Jam-packed show today. Uh, we will take a look inside FanFest uh, and get a chance to see how fans spend the time between the round of 12 and right before the TV show get a chance to take in autographs and talk with many of their favorite players. We'll also sit down with two bowlers who have some TV experience, especially recently. That's Liz Colkin, who has made the last three telecasts, and Rocio Restrepo, last week's champion. Speaking of road, let's take a look back at last week's memorable victory. It was the vibrant and emotional Rocio Restrepo that we all know and love. Let's take a look back at the BowlerX.com Twin Cities Open. The first match I was a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. Uh, my, I was dropping the ball so I needed to put tape. Then when I came into the next match, Liz Colton, our top seed, takes on Rocio I knew I had to bowl really good because Liz bowled amazing, phenomenal this week. And once she made that switch, I knew it was, you know, a matter of pink carry. For the turkey, dirty pin lead. It does push. And we both had kind of like a four pin. She leaves a seven pin. Unfortunately, she missed two spares. I tried to stay clean. Uh, I knew coming into the 10 frame, I needed to make a really good shot just to force her to double or whatever. Um, that was the, the, the left line, which was the one that was giving us all trouble. But to me, once I made that change of bowling balls from the beginning, I knew I had to play them. I wanted to play them the same, so I just needed a different layout. So I used a pin down on the left and a pin up on the right just to, to get loose and make sure I got through it. I know that my physical game is not 100% yet. I know that there, there are a lot, lot of things I need to work on in the next few weeks. Obviously, that event means a lot. Uh, I'm looking forward to go over there because I have friends there, Paola Gomez, Andres Gomez's sister. I want to see the baby again. and. Also, last year I didn't perform as good as I could have. I felt like I kind of gave it away and I didn't even try very much. So this year I just want to enjoy, have fun and make the best of that, you know, venue that we have out there. Uh, I want to take in the full experience of it. Congrats again to the Rocio Restrepo, last week's champion, the BowlerX.com PWBA Twin Cities Open. Now let's take an in-depth look at a new feature part of the PWBA Tour in 2018, FanFest, and we'll take a look at it from both fan and player perspective. Here's Stephanie Johnson to take you through it. Hey guys, Stephanie Johnson here coming to you live from Egan, Minnesota. We are here at FanFest, so what is that? All the bowling vendors get to come out, Fans get to test their new equipment, see what they like, mingle with the fans, and uh, sign some autographs. It's really fun. I mean, I never thought I'd actually see them in real life. I'm so used to just watching them on TV, but now they're actually here. It's really hard to believe, because as I said before, I've just seen them on TV, but now I'm meeting them in person, and it's, it's really amazing. So here at FanFest, all the bowling manufacturers get to come showcase their newest equipment. They have about four or five of each bowling ball, different spans. The fans get to come, get fitted with grips and thumbs, and throw the bowling ball, see what they like, um, visit their local pro shops, and hopefully order some bowling balls. It's really cool. It's, we get to try a couple of really great balls, and it's cool to meet some of the pros. It's just a lot of fun. So it's really awesome to be able to get the opportunity to mingle with everybody that supports us. We get to shake hands with them, sign autographs, take pictures. Uh, this is really what it's all about. So being able to give back to the communities that allow us the opportunities to bowl, there's nothing better than that. 
awesome, awesome package of the Fan Fest. Big thanks to Stephanie Johnson and Jason McEwen for putting that together. Uh, the fans uh, get a chance to see their favorite players and two of those players who have been on TV recently as well. Rocio Restrepo, Liz Culkin, are here with us on this week's On the Road episode. Uh, these two players have battled uh, some of their own individual adversity. Uh, Liz, I want to start with you. You've made three consecutive TV appearances. Uh, you won the U.S. Women's Open, obviously, but you hadn't won since 2015. So um, what was the, the adversity like, and then how did it feel to uh, exit, essentially, that, um, that, that uh, time period where, you know, you just weren't feeling yourself? Right. Um, I think the biggest wake-up call for me was at the Queens this year. Um, the Queens is my favorite tournament of the year. I have made the cut ever since I started bowling in 2015, and to not make that cut and not be able to bowl match play was like just deflating a balloon kind of, and it made me kind of realize I have to step back and really figure out what's going on here. For a while I thought it was my mental toughness, but I said, you know what, let's go back to basics and think about what made me successful in 2015. And, um, I did that and I worked with the Team USA coaches and spoke with Coach Straub and Coach Klemp at the University of Nebraska and kind of went back to what made me successful and um, we went to the East Coast in Kentucky and Connecticut and Harrisburg and I was knocking on the door. Right. Um, I just missed the show in Harrisburg by 10 pins a week before, actually I think it was less than that. And um, I knew I was close to really breaking out and at the US Open I actually started out kind of slow. and. Yeah. Um, made my way up to the step ladder and was able to run the ladder to win and um, I've been kind of just riding the wave you know I've been having a lot of really good momentum come my way and when that happens out here um, you have to take an advantage of it and keep going with it so I feel like uh, you mentioned the Team USA coaches and you are on the team the adult yep. team uh, first time this year I mean in a way Team USA trials may have kind of kick-started yeah, uh, your year in that sense. But what was what was that like making the adult team for the first time? That was really cool. So I made junior team USA in two thousand and fourteen and I got to travel to the World Youth Championships and I medaled there and that was really cool. Um, it's been a goal ever since then to try to get on the adult team and uh, that happened in January. Um, the same time I signed with Brunswick right. and a lot of good things yeah. were happening and I'm really excited about that and I also get to travel to um, the Dominican Republic in September for PADCON. And uh, that's really exciting too that I'm getting the opportunity. It's just really cool to work with a lot of the veteran players that are on that team and call them your teammates. Absolutely. Uh, and Rocio, uh, you've dealt with some adversity also. Uh, you, you talked about some struggles with you know, health, for example. But you know, last week you put it all together. Um, you, we had talked briefly before the event, and you say you felt good about where your game was in comparison to where it had been. So, uh, what was the win like, and, and for you to break through in your own sense and own way? Well, just like Liz said, um, when we're out here, uh, we might think that it's our mental game that's struggling, but sometimes the physical part of our game just really goes bad and we don't realize it because we kind of become part, uh, a product of our environments too, yeah. and we get a little bit into bad habits, so that's why it's important to have someone, those second eyes, pair of eyes, yeah. to watch what you're doing. So for me, uh, to be honest, when I when I bowled the U.S. Open, and for the second straight year, last year I missed a cut completely, and that's a no-no for me. Because I've always like kind of I have always made a cut. I'm I'm always like top eight, top ten. Um, this year I struggled because I hurt my elbow really bad prior to the U.S. Open, and knowing that I had so much elbow pain and all these difficulties that I was going through, I'm like my game has to be really really bad because. Even though I don't think so, uh, I'm, I can't repeat shots, right. and nothing. So I took three weeks out of obviously out of competition. I actually practiced a little less, but I made a lot of changes. So I was just really giving myself time to to put everything together and work with the coaches at Wichita State, talk to Fred Borden as well, and we figured things out. Made a few changes on my span and my pitches, so I pretty much went. From, I changed so much, so I didn't know what to expect until I went to Colombia, bowled the Central American Games, shot 800, which I hadn't shot in two years, and okay. winning the gold medal kind of helped. I won with Clara as well, really bowled right. good. Right so that was um, a great moment. And, um, and I Williams didn't get to bowl here, the first event of the, the lead tour. However, 
Well, we, we got the ball. We only bowled eight games. I averaged 111. <laughs> so that was a kicker for me. Right. I'm like, oh man, I need. Right. To, I have a. I can improve next week, right? I can finish. I right. can shoot 111 next week for sure. So coming into last week, I was just really thankful for the opportunity to be able to bowl 16 games because I missed the first eight the week before, and. I knew I was trying to bowl good, so it was just a matter of letting things happen and the angles that I wanted to play, the, the angles that the pattern allowed me to play fell into my A game a little right. bit, so I took an advantage of that and really, really focused on the show because I didn't want to make mistakes of what I did in the past on a live show. I took my time, I asked for tape, I uh, probably took too much time, but it's what I needed to do at that moment. And um, Liz bowled really, really good on the show, and she really brought the best out of me. I knew I couldn't make bad shots because she's bowling really good. She's been a great competitor yes. always. Uh, it was a little surprising that she wasn't bowling like I know she cool. And to see that she's having such a great season is is fun to watch. I'm, I'm curious though, yeah. you guys bowled each other, uh, but when you're on TV, uh, describe to the viewers if you can, in the best way you can, what it's actually like to bowl under the lights, especially when it's live. It's a completely different animal, like, I mean, I've been on TV the past three weeks, and even last week, I'm just as nervous as when I bowled on the U.S. Open show. I don't think that ever changes, I mean, it's hot. It's, it's unbelievably hot. Um, in Florida, it was awesome. We had, that set was packed. Right. Okay, that's the, the Seminole Lanes, it was packed and it was so hot. And I mean, it's just TV, it's live TV. There's all the lights, there's a lot of people. You're nervous, you're still shaking. Um, it takes a lot, it takes your deepest mental mindset to really try and just pretend like it's day one, game one, qualifying round one, um, because you really have to try to make the best shots you can, even though you're bowling on live television and in front of a lot of people. Um, and, and it's a really, it's a test for your mental toughness for sure. I also feel that it goes by really fast, so that's why it's important to take your time because usually during a round of competition you you have time to take to put tape on your ball. On TV you have to ask for that time, then you have to get ready. Like I personally never had to change an, a thumb in the middle of my shots and that was one of my on biggest struggles on TV and, and I was like, oh my god, I feel like I'm rushing, but that's why I make sure that I took my time just because I don't, we don't get so many opportunities to be on live TV, so I want to make the best out of it. And for me, it was actually getting through that first match and then really committing to what I wanted to do on this show. I actually felt that uh, usually I have a tendency to make bad shots on TV when I really need them. And this time around, uh, I know that my mental game has been a lot stronger than I, the prior years. So I knew that I could use that. And actually, TV for me feels good because having all that, the, the crowd and everyone makes me just narrow down my focus to one thing. So I actually don't see the cameras. I don't see the people. I don't know what's going on around me, which I think is is a blessing, sure. but it could be very distracting from other people, right. and I take good that. Television. Yeah, I get that uh, loud environment, and I make it so I can block everything out. So for, it's a lot different, but uh, you feel nervous, yeah. uh, like you know, like you're bowling the first event I'm, ever I'm on the for, tour. For all y'all, <laughs> honestly, yeah, I'm on the side of it. So, but it's it's a great experience for sure. In the realm of uh, being a champion, of course, you're a two-time champion, you're a four-time champion now, but champions this season, which means that you get to go to uh, the Tour Championship, you're on the road to Richmond officially um, in a minute or so uh, as, we, as we wrap it up. Liz, the, uh, tell me what you're most excited about, maybe looking forward to uh, as you make a return. It's been a few years since you've, you've had the bowl and you haven't experienced like Richmond Raceway, which no, is I have not. Uh, new essentially. Absolutely. So I went to the Tour Championship the first year when it was at the ITRC. And the ITRC is a beautiful place. It is. Um, but I've been there before. Right, right. Um, 
but Richmond Speedway. I mean, I am a sport fan to a T. I love sports. Um, do I have much use for NASCAR right now? Not really. However, um, everybody I've spoken to that has been, uh, Kathy Kavicki is one person. She loves NASCAR, but she's try- kind of make, yeah, kind of making me <laughs> appreciate how cool right. this is really going to be between meeting the drivers, seeing the race, um, and just all the other things that we're going to be around the the fan fests and meeting different people and just being in the speedway. I'm really excited to just be a part of the event in general, not only bowl, but to be a part of all those really fun events. But I'm really excited to see my first NASCAR race. That's going to be really cool. Um, Just the loudness and stuff of it. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to that, too. I I wasn't there, I should say, last year either because I was getting married. I'm I'm, I'm still married, so I'm not going to go do that again, um, at least for the the next lifetime. Okay, Uh, Ro, uh, same thing. Uh, You've been there, and you experienced Richmond as well last year, but... I know it wasn't what you wanted to make it, so you're looking to do that again. So what are you looking for? Yes, uh, this year I really, really want to focus on my bowling. I didn't really get to experience any of the NASCAR race. I didn't plan my trip very good, so I was very disappointed. And to know that I have the opportunity to do it again is, for me, is exciting. Uh, I'm going to focus on my bowling first, and then I'm going to have to make time to enjoy all the NASCAR, the races and everything. I, I grew up watching NASCAR because of Juan Pablo Montoya. Okay. He used to be a NASCAR racer, and I remember before I even bowl, uh, that he was one of my favorite athletes to watch, and I used to go and watch the TV and, oh my God, Juan Pablo! So now, awesome. now I'm excited to be able to go and experience that. So. That's awesome. Okay, well, we're looking forward to it. It's gonna um, be fun. I'm looking forward to having fun with you two as well. I want to thank you for joining us on On the Road this week. Rocio Restrepo, uh, Liz Colkin. You can watch them live, folks, on Bowl TV. Our, our coverage will begin on Friday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, with round one of the Elite Field. Uh, round two will be at 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll cut to the top 12 for Saturday morning, six games. And then uh, they've been on TV before. Uh, Liz, three in a row. Can she make it four? We'll find out. I'm trying uh, to catch up to him. Yes, she is. <laughs> Uh, so for Liz Colkin, Rocio Restrepo, I want to thank Jason McEwen and Jason Thomas. I'm Emil Williams Jr. We will see you next week at the Players' Championship, third major of the season in Plano, Texas. Until then, we'll see you in the chat room. Bowl TV, don't forget to watch us. We'll see you next week. Thank you.